Hello, this is Chad from School of the American Rifle. Today, I'm producing a video in conjunction with AR Bill Junkie about AR-15 firing pin protrusion. So if you're wondering what firing pin protrusion is, it is the amount that the firing pin will stick out from the bolt face. So I have a cutaway bolt here. Normal bolt, if you grab one, you have all this business going on. This is stripped down so there's no ejector or extractor. This one's fully assembled. But it's the amount that, that firing pin pokes out under operation when the hammer hits it. So that's protrusion. And I'm going to show you on a cutaway bolt. So firing pin goes in. And how much the firing pin sticks out right there is what we're going to measure. Set that aside. We have three bolts here we're going to measure in the video, but before we get to that, I'm going to show you the gauges that you could use to measure firing pin protrusion. We have a depth or anvil gauge. This is a digital model. We're going to use this for these three examples. This is an easier gauge to use. That's why we're going to utilize it in the video. Very accurate. Then we have a set of calipers. To use this, you would put the bolt face on the bolt like this, and then you would go down into the recess to use this to touch against the tip of the firing pin. Not quite as accurate as this. And then you have an old style firing pin protrusion gauge. What you would do is measure this when it's zeroed, and then you put this on the bolt face, firing pin would kick this little piece out. You lock it down and then measure it again, and that would give you your protrusion. And then the last two are military gauges. These are U.S. government issue gauges. This one at the top is U.S. government issue. This is a copy of the U.S. government issue gauge. We have markings on here, which is what we're going to utilize in the video. Maximum of 0 .036 and minimum of 0 .028. So we'll go ahead and get into measuring these. We'll start with this bolt here. You're going to take the gauge and you're going to put it over the firing pin hole. So that's what we're trying to measure, how much it pops out or sticks out or protrudes. We're going to zero the gauge out. While I'm holding this against the gauge, I'm going to push on the firing pin and we get 0 .033. We'll let it go. Make sure we go back to zero. Do it one more time. 0 .033. So we're within range here. We're between 0 .028 and 0 .036. Set that aside. We have another example here. This one's assembled, so it's a little harder to get the gauge into the bolt face because we can't see as much, but we'll put it right over the firing pin hole. Zero the gauge out. And again, I'm going to push the firing pin with the palm of my hand while I'm holding these two pieces together. And we get 0 .038. So we're actually excessive by about 0 .002. We'll do that one more time. We get 0 .0 almost 0 .038. We can see how it's moving in between 0 .0375 and 0 .038. So we have too much there. Not good. Move to this last one. Cover the firing pin hole. Zero it out. Push with my palm. And we get 0 .025. So we're at least 0 .0025 short on this example. We'll do it one more time. Oh, look, there we go. 0 0.025. So we're almost 0 0.003 short on this example. So why is that important? If your firing pin protrusion is short, when the hammer drops and strikes the firing pin, you won't have enough protrusion to ignite the primer in some situations. That will cause it not to go off. You get a click and no bang. If you have excessive, what can happen is, is the firing pin can actually punch through the primer. When that happens, you can have gas that leaks out and erodes the bolt face, or it can cause the gun not to be able to contain the explosion that goes off when the primer is ignited, and you could have something that blows up. That's an absolute worst case scenario, but it's bad to have too much. When it punches the primer, what can happen is it almost like works like a hole puncher. You'll get little tiny pieces of primer that it is the size of the firing pin hole that will punch and go all throughout the gun. You'll get it inside the firing pin channel. If we have on our cutaway, it'll get all inside to here. We're going to get in all the little nooks and crevices in the gun where the operating surfaces are, and you don't want that. So too much protrusion is bad, and it can be dangerous. Too little, and it can cause the gun not to go off, and that could be dangerous if you need to use the gun for an important purpose, like hunting or self-defense. And then we have a good example of firing pin protrusion here. To drive the measurements home, I wrote on this whiteboard here, 
go, 0.028 to 0.036. You don't want to be shorter than this. You don't want to be longer than that. And then just to drive it home some more, I have two manuals here. One is the Army TM 23MP manual. This is from November of 2008. We're going to open it up to page 11-5, and you can see the government issue gauge being used. And then they're showing the measurements, 0 0.028, 0 0.036. Then I have one more book just to bring in to reinforce, Cold Operations Manual CM118. And again, they're using the military government style gauges. And then they give the measurements down here, 036, 028. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching School of the American Rifle. Look for more videos like this on ARBillJunkie.com.